Hi there. Not long ago, I was traveling along a busy highway, and traffic was bumper to bumper. Even worse, there were semi-trucks all along the road. I hate traffic, don't you? Along the highway, vehicles were getting off at many exits. On those exits that were very popular, or where the roads were narrower, traffic was often slowed down or even at a standstill. Today we're thinking about bandwidth, a term that we often hear, but few people understand. To understand bandwidth, you need to know that the data you send and receive on the internet is split up into many little chunks called packets. Each packet travels separately on the highway system of internet connections and is put back together at its destination, like boxes of stuff traveling in vehicles along the road. The more vehicles, the more bandwidth use. In many ways, bandwidth is like the size and quality of roads. The bigger and better the road, the more traffic it can handle. Keep that comparison in mind as we consider the types of internet connections and how to manage your use of bandwidth. Dial-up, DSL, cable modem, these terms describe different ways that your computer can connect to the internet. But your computer is not directly connected to the internet. You're connecting through an ISP, or Internet Service Provider. ISPs are kind of like exits on an interstate highway. The interstates themselves, the super high-speed connections between universities, ISPs, and government servers, rarely get blocked up. But the traffic coming off of these exits usually go at slower speeds, sometimes much slower speeds, than the traffic on the interstate highways. And that last mile from the exit to your house or your computer is usually where people experience frustration with their internet connection speeds. Instead of being measured in miles per hour, internet connection speeds are measured in bits per second. If a kilobit is a box of data and a megabit is a thousand boxes of data, how many boxes of data can travel at the same time on each kind of road? Let's take a closer look at the types of roads that might get from the ISP to your computer. A dial-up connection is pretty old school. You connect your computer to the ISP through a normal phone line, which wasn't designed to carry much data. A dial-up connection can accommodate as much as 56 kilobits per second. In our analogy, 56 boxes of data can arrive at once. Pretty slow. In addition, a dial-up connection ties up your phone line so it can't be used for calls. A DSL connection works in a different way. Rather than traveling over your normal phone line, DSL connections use copper wires that can carry much more traffic and are always connected to your ISP without tying up your phone line. DSL connections can vary in speed from 512 kilobits per second to 8 megabits per second. Using our analogy, that's between 512 and 8,000 boxes of data each second. A cable modem is even faster. It uses higher bandwidth coaxial cable and can carry between 512 kilobits per second and 20 megabits per second. At top speed, we're talking 20,000 boxes of data screaming down the road each second. Other popular ways of connecting to the net include Ethernet, up to 10 megabits per second, satellite, up to 512 kilobits per second, and T3 lines used by some businesses with speeds up to 45 megabits per second. So you get an idea for the different road sizes of internet connections, but what does it mean to you? How can you manage your bandwidth use to cause you the least frustration and to limit how much you slow down the other people who share the same connection you do? Here are some tips. First, consider how much bandwidth you actually need. Most file sizes are measured in bytes, which is equal to 8 bits. A typical text-only email is about 6 kilobytes in size, which is about 48 kilobits of data, 48 boxes in our analogy. A typical article on Wikipedia is about 100 kilobytes in size, which is about 800 kilobits, or 800 boxes. A music download from iTunes might be 5 megabytes, or 40 megabits of data, 40,000 boxes. A YouTube video is about 15 megabytes in size, which is 120 megabits or 120,000 boxes of data. And a graphic intense program like Second Life requires the constant sending and receiving of large amounts of data. If all you're doing is sending emails or reading web pages, you don't need a big road to transfer that data. A slower internet connection will be just fine. But if you're downloading music or videos, or if you're playing graphics intensive games online, you're not going to get away with a dial-up connection. 
this would be a good time to bring up another important fact. Usually the speed for sending data from your computer is much slower than the speed of receiving data to your computer. A second tip, travel when there's less traffic. At certain times of the day, many people sharing your internet connection or using the same ISP as you will be sending and receiving lots of data. It's a good idea to avoid the road during rush hour, or at least be aware of how much of the road you're hogging during those periods. You can check how fast your connection is at different times of the day by doing a Google search for speed test. You'll find lots of sites that will tell you how fast your connection lets data travel at that moment. If you do this at different times of the day, you can get an idea of which times are best for activities that use a lot of bandwidth. Third, cache more. All web browsers and many standalone programs allow you to choose how much data you will keep in a cache. A cache saves information about a web page or program the first time you download it, so that when you visit it again it pulls data from the cache and doesn't need to download the same data over and over again. This is especially helpful if you're on a slow connection. Back in the day, narrow two-lane roads were fine. There weren't that many cars, and the ones that did exist weren't used all day long. Of course, that has changed. The same roads that worked long ago are unable to handle the needs of modern life. In a similar way, more and more people are using the Internet, and average file sizes are getting larger as more people use multimedia content. Going into the future, our roads will need to be bigger, or we're going to have a lot more traffic jams. Thanks for watching.